What a wonderful time in God's presence. What a great time to be alive. And we can see that there is such a, an awesome presence of God in this place. I don't want to take much time. I really would love to give Pastor Pat this time to come. We'll do other things after that. Because I know that he's also going to Durban uh, to preach at my, brother, my brother-in-law's church. In fact, it's my father-in-law's church. Uh, in Devon, my late father in law's church uh, at SP. At SP. A restoration after this. She's preaching there. He's preaching there. So I would like to give him the time so that he come and minister to us. Pastor Bert is such a great encouragement to us. Pastor Bert was himself and Pastor Shane. They need such a powerful church of over 30,000 members in Pretoria. I thought we were going to give a lot of hand for that. And apart from that, he leads uh, pastors, fraternities from across South Africa. And God has used him tremendously to encourage many of us. And also, uh, during the COVID, COVID, here is Kawin. Kawin. He came with trucks and assisted us to feed more than 4,000 families. Like Kawin. It was Pastor Bert. The trucks were there in our sight. More than 4,000 families. Grocery of over 2,000 rands worth. About 3,000 I think 2,500 each. You can just do your mathematics and see how much was spent on that. He carries a deep heart of soul winning uh, which is our heart. Praise and worship is at the pace of this church. Prayer is but at the front is soul winning. So he's coming here with that mantle but whatever the Lord gives him but apart from that, he's been also a great encouragement to us in building projects. At one time he came here, I know you would like me to say, but I want to say this, he gave 100,000 to our building projects. I was going to give the Lord a more hand, Kichima. So he is Kichima with us. He is running alongside us. Amen. So we want to thank you so much. I preached in his conference, a very, very big conference. I think, I think over 10,000 people gathered there. G12 conference that he hosts in Pretoria. Pretoria. He travels across the world. We are uh, I hope that next year, because we'll be taking a sabbatical, when he goes to Pokota, wherever, we, we will get a time to go just to, just to be there and, 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 and soak ourselves in the vision. Oh yes, can we please stand brothers and sisters and put our hands together for Pastor Bert as he comes to share the word of God with us. Hallelujah! Bless the Lord. Thank you. I said it, we're going to interpret because many says so we are interpret that we'll see how it goes God bless you, thank you thank you, hallelujah let's give Jesus a great hand of praise we love you Jesus we worship you, come on give him praise give him praise hallelujah and heavenly Father, as we are gathered here together thank you for your Holy Spirit here thank you for your presence that has done such a a deep work in our hearts already that we are ready we prepare to receive your word and Lord we're not here by accident we're here because we purpose to be here and Lord that we'll not leave here the same but we'll leave here changed and transformed by the power of your word that will change our hearts renew our minds transform our beings so that we can be more effective for you in our living and everything we are and do I surrender and humble myself before you, Lord. As I speak your word, help me to speak with accuracy. So, Lord, that I can speak your word. Not the opinion of Bert Pretorius. That's death. We need your word, Lord. Your word is life. 
And thank you, Lord, that you helped me to speak your word in Jesus' name. And everyone shouted. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Thank you very much. What a privilege it is for me to be here once again. And um, I love coming here. Amen. I, I am more blessed. I know you might be blessed when I come, but I am more blessed than you are blessed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And therefore, it's a, it's a privilege to be here today and to be able to just come and share. And I want to say thank you to your leaders. You have got such tremendous, tremendous leaders. Apostle Collins and Apostoli, Prophet Tesno Musa, you are such a blessing and a gift to our nation. And we honor you, we respect you, we look up to you, we learn from you, and thank you for the privilege of having me here. It's all, always a blessing. And um, I, learn, I learn a lot from you, I'm still learning. And thank you for embracing us and for having me here. We love you and we love those beautiful daughters of yours. They like my own daughters. I love them. Hallelujah. And they're so on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're so proud of how God is using them in, in a mighty way throughout the nation and the world. And uh, we are thankful for your life. Come on, let's give it up for your pastor. Hallelujah. The Bible, as we celebrate the Easter time, Jesus died for us, rose again for the forgiveness of sin, promising those who believe in him will receive everlasting life. And that's what we celebrate. Luke chapter 23 and 33. We see when they came to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals on the right hand and the left. And in verse 34, then Jesus said, Father, Baba, please forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He's addressing the crowd, the soldiers, the government, because they were all in on his death. He says, Father, forgive them. It's the first words of the last words that Jesus speaks. And we see that they divided the garments and they mocked him. And we see then one of the criminals spoke in verse 38. 39. He blasphemed Jesus. And he said, if you are the Christ, save your soul and us. But the one on the other side said to the criminal, do you not fear God? Do you not even fear God? Do you not even Fear God. I'll say it one more time. Do you not even fear God? Amen. Amen. Do you not even fear God? He says there, seeing you are under the same condemnation, we indeed justly we receive due reward for our deeds. But this man, he's done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, he said, Lord, 
course, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. On this day of Easter, I want to reflect on the heart of Jesus. I want to reflect on the heart of God. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus loved us so much that he gave up his life to be able to die for us. He could have chosen not to. He could have given in to fear. But he never he chose to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Now watch this. In his agony, on the cross, we see that Jesus is a soul winner. At his worst, being tortured, being ridiculed, being mocked, this is the king of the Jews. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Ridiculed. Mocked. In his worst condition, Jesus' heart was not for himself. While on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Because they do not know what they are doing. And while on the cross, we see there's a criminal that never had the faith. Couldn't see God's mercy and grace and love. But one criminal understood, saw, heard, and his life was changed. On the cross, Jesus is a soul winner. Amen. In his worst condition, he's a soul winner. And my question to you today, is your heart for God? Because if your heart is for God, your heart will be for people. Amen. Amen. Now, let me show you. He starts off with a statement. And he says, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Now, my question is, seriously? They don't know what they're doing. They really didn't know what they're doing. They plotted his death for months. They paid Judas to betray him. They held a mock trial in the middle of the night. The crowd called for his crucifixion. They set a murderer free rather than the innocent Jesus. The governor, Pilate, the government of the day, they knew he was innocent. But rather, they're looking for the applause of the people. And they'd rather stand for the applause of the people but and the justice and righteousness of God. And Pilate gave him over. The Roman soldiers spit on him. They drove the nails into his body. You want to tell me? They did not know what they were doing while they were hitting the nails into his hands, hitting the nails into his feet. Jesus 
Christ, Jesus, his Christ. agony was real. Yet going through all of this, he said, Father, forgive them. Watch the heart of Jesus. Then he says again, he says, for they don't know what they are doing. And my question is, why don't they know? Why don't they know? Why doesn't the government know? Why don't the soldiers know? Why doesn't the crowd know? Why don't the people know? Why don't, know? Why don't our relatives know the reason they don't know is because of sin. Sin makes you blind. Sin makes you deaf. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 it says the God of this age has blinded the people and has blinded their minds to keep them from seeing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, all of those people were blinded to the truth. The Jewish leaders were blinded. The crowd were blinded. The governor was blinded. The soldiers were blinded. None of them had spiritual eyes to see. And that's why we've got to understand that apart from Christ, we are all spiritually blind and we are spiritually deaf. You don't know. We don't know. And that's why we need Jesus within our lives. If we look at Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 1, he says there, the word of the Lord came to me saying, He says, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house who has eyes to see but does not see. They have ears to hear but do not hear. Apostle Collins, no. Apostoli. I speak. We, we sit. Kulum. We sit with people. Nabant. We preach the gospel to crowds, to multitudes. I sit in meetings with multitudes of politicians, with multitudes of business people, with multitudes of individuals. And you will speak. Kulum. But they do not hear. Because although they got eyes, they do not see. Why? Rebellion. Sin makes you deaf. Sin makes you blind. The word rebellious means disobedient, unruly, stubborn, uncontrollable. In other words, you're so consumed with what you want. I want what I want. I want what I want. I want what I want. And therefore you don't hear. Hello. Sunborn. Matthew chapter 13. It says, and in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. Which is saying, hearing, you will hear and not understand. You hear, but you don't get it. You hear, but you do not comprehend. You hear, but you do not understand. You hear, but you do not appreciate. He says, and seeing, you will see, but you don't perceive. You don't recognize. 
You cannot identify. You do not notice. You cannot focus. But you see. Why? For the hearts of this people. Have grown dull. I look at our nation. The hearts of our people have grown dull. Hello. We have a people that see but don't perceive. They hear but they don't understand. And that's why we need God within our lives. I just look at the Ten Commandments. I mean, just take Ten Commandments. Not all the law. You know, we did a census in our nation. Apostle Collins, I don't know if you remember. They said 80% of South Africa is Christian. Christian. 80%. But we're number one or number two in the world for murder. We're number three in the world for human trafficking. You're saying we're Christian while well, somebody's lying. Somebody who says they're Christian, they're not Christian. Bump your neighbor, ask your neighbor, are you lying? Are you lying? Are you lying? Just because you attend a Christian church doesn't make you Christian. Somebody's lying. Somebody who says they're Christian is not Christian. Because we wouldn't have the issues we have today if 80% of us were genuinely Christian. Somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. Just look at the Ten Commandments. It says, I am the Lord your God. And you shall have no strange gods before you. Huh? But yet we add our gods to Jesus. Jesus is not number one within our lives. Secondly, it says, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Yet where we look, people use the name of Christ as a swear word. It is in all the movies. And we watch this. It says, thirdly, remember to keep the Holy Lord's day. But yet, we don't. Sunday is the first day of the week. Belongs to the law. We don't go to church on a Sunday. Oh, no, we work on a Sunday. Amen. You say you honor God. You say you're a Christian. Please don't call yourself Christian. Please don't call yourself Christian. But you can't get to God. He says you keep the day of the Lord. Verse 4, uh, number 4. He says honor your father and your mother. See one of the biggest issues we have within our nation today. Is we've lost the sanctity of family. The best form of governance in known to mankind is the family. God ordained the family. 
if we're struggling with governance within the nation, it's because we've lost the sanctity of family. That's God's genius. Within our nation, family doesn't seem important. Staying married doesn't seem important. Raising our kids doesn't seem important. Amen. We run after all kinds of things. And then we have the world come to tell us what family is, what marriage is. He says, honor your father and your mother. He doesn't say, honor your father and your father. Hey. Amen. He doesn't say, honor your mother and your mother. See, but we don't talk about these things in the church because we're too scared. What people will think. What people will say. And then you wonder why your children are struggling. But they've never heard you speak. Because you're not raising your kids. The Bible says train your kids in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. Are you raising your kids? Who's raising your kids? Therefore, the problem is not the government. The problem is the church. Bump your neighbor and say, are you Christian? Just, just checking. Don't come shabba 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 and you're not raising your kids. These days we can't even look and see and say, oh, you're a boy or you're a girl. People are blind. People are deaf. That's why he says they don't know what they do. They don't know. Why? They're blind. They deaf. He says, you shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Say, oh, Pastor, no, I wanted a nice message. It says, you shall not cover your neighbor's goods. You don't look at your neighbor's nice car and say, I want it. So the world is blind. The world cannot see. But I've got good news for you today. That if we turn to Jesus, he can set us free. And know that I'm not judging anybody today. I'm not condemning everybody. Because we all have issues. Can I get a big amen? amen but if you come to Jesus, God, among, among I, Jesus He Jesus. can set you free. He can forgive your sin. He can cleanse you. I and eh? He can change you. I Hallelujah. Amen. amen. But we've got to set the standard. Are you hearing me? So we're not condemning you if you've been divorced. We're not condemning you if you struggle with your identity. You struggle with your sexuality. You struggle with your gender. Or you struggle with lying, deceiving. At the end of the day, here's the thing. If you come to Jesus, he can change you. He can restore you. He can help you. He can deliver you. He can lead you. He can guide you. 
your deeds. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is not here to judge you. And see, oh, uh, let's see if you're a good person or a bad person. No, no, no. It's whether you're a dead person. Sin will kill you. Sin will destroy you. Sin will hurt you. Amen. 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 But if we trust the Lord, He'll help us. Amen. Can I get a big amen, amen there today? Now, that was my introduction. I've just got another 25 pages. And then we'll be finished. Amen. That's why Easter is three days. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, why am I saying this? Most of us here are Christians. So we know that when we struggle, we look to Jesus. And he helps us. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm showing you it's important that we be soul winners. So how do the people know if they don't know what they're doing? You know how they know? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not hearing, not hearing by your opinion. Not hearing by what you think. But hearing what? The word of God. So how do we transform this nation? We transform this nation by sharing the good news that we have all sinned. We've all fall short. None of us have it together. But by the grace of God, our lives have been changed and transformed. And that's why Proverbs 11 verse, 30, it's like 11 verse 30. It says that the fruit of the righteous it is, us all long is a tree of life. Who is, is, is that us all and he who wins souls is wise. Amen. Now let me show you. He who wins souls is Wise. Which means if you don't win souls, I'm showing you too. You're not wise. Right? So let me show you how this works. When your eyes are on yourself, what I need. What I want. Your eyes are down. Right? Because you're looking at yourself. When your eyes are on yourself, your depression, your mental capacity, your emotional capacity, your financial needs. When your eyes are on yourself, what does that mean? Your eyes are down. What happens when your eyes are down? It means you cannot see. You have no vision. When your eyes are on your own needs, you do not have vision. Are you hearing me? Now watch Matthew chapter 9, 36. The Bible says, and when Jesus saw the multitude, what did he do? He saw the multitude. He did what? He saw the multitude. They were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. What did he do? He saw the people. 
You see, when your eyes are focused on yourself and, and your needs, you're never going to see people. You understand? Then you say, well, pastor, what about my needs? Well, you're always going to have needs. Call me a prophet. Next week, you're going to have needs. You're a prophet. Uh, call me a prophet. Hey, I'm a prophet. Uh, In five years' time, you'll have needs. Amen. You're going to have needs till the day you die. And then we need to bury you. You die and you're needy. You hear me? You hear me? So your needs cannot determine your purpose. I was Jesus was on the cross. Do you think he had needs? He was thirsty. Why But what did he do? He led the criminals to Jesus. He was a soul winner. And that's why he says, he who wins souls is wise. Because while your vision is on yourself, you're not going to see. You're not going to see. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, my people perish. They run wild. They are unrestrained. If your eyes are focused on your needs, you will not have vision. You are unrestrained. And that means the decisions you make in your marriage are not going to be good decisions. The decisions for your children are not going to be accurate decisions. Your decisions in your daily work and your business are not going to be good decisions. Why? Your eyes are down. Got no vision. That's why when you become a soul winner, you lift up your eyes. And that's why in, in, in Genesis chapter 13, when, 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 when uh, Lot was giving Abraham issues, then God said to Abraham, He said, Abraham, At Abraham lift up your eyes. eyes. Lift up your eyes. eyes. Lift up your eyes. eyes. And see. Eyes. Look Buga. to the north, Buga. the south, and the and east, east, the west. And everything you see, I will give you and your descendants. When your eyes are on yourself, you're looking for the wrong things. Are you hearing me? Which means that every decision in your life, your finances, your family, they're going to be wrong decisions. Are you hearing me? That's why if you're not a soul winner, and you're making decisions every day, you're in trouble. Because you've got a warped vision. You can't see. Then you wonder why you struggle with your family. You wonder why you struggle in the workplace. Are you hearing me yet today? And therefore, I want to encourage you today. The bit of time that I've got left. It's important that we see. When you go to the restaurant and the waitress comes to serve you, what do you see? Is she part of the machinery? And she must serve you. And if she doesn't serve you well, you get all upset. Oh, the food is too cold. Why do you take so long? Go call the manager. Oh, no tip for you. 
Are you focused on yourself? No vision. No vision. No vision. No vision. Or do you see her no, as a daughter of God? You look at her different. You realize you need to help her. You need to minister to her. You need to touch her. Amen. When you stand in the long line by the cash register are you standing, standing there getting all upset and saying, why is this taking so long? Where's the manager? Oh, I can't stand you for two hours. Hey. 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 <laughs> or do you see the people do you see the people and say, Lord, you've ordained it that I stand in a long line. What do you want me to do? Who must I minister to? Who do I have to share the gospel with? When you get to the cash register, what do you see? Do you see a person that's part of the machinery that must serve you? Or do you see a person that needs the gospel? A person that does not know. The person that is under pressure. The person that is distressed. The person that you can touch and minister to. Are you blind? Are you hearing me? They do not know. And that's why it's important that we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How they going to hear if we don't go and share the word and the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Not how beautiful are the shoes. Oh, what shoes are you wearing, Pastor? Pastor. Oh, it's Prada. Oh, it's Prada shoes. Ooh. Oh, how beautiful are the shoes. Look at your neighbor's shoes. Look at your neighbor's shoes. You see, you, you only need beautiful shoes when you've got ugly feet. You need beautiful shoes to cover the ugly feet. But when you've got beautiful feet, you don't need brands. I don't need to stand next to a Mercedes and say, hey. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. The Mercedes doesn't make me. I make the Mercedes. The Mercedes must pay me. I'm the brand. My feet are beautiful. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got beautiful feet. Tell your neighbor, you got beautiful feet. You got beautiful feet. Tell your neighbor, you are the fashion, baby. You are the fashion. You are the brand. I don't need to run off the brands and money. That doesn't make me. My Louis Vuitton doesn't make me. My LV. LV. No. I am the LV. Baby. The beautiful feet. The beautiful feet. The beautiful feet. The beautiful feet. Hallelujah. Amen. You're it. 
You see, when you see multitudes, you don't need stuff to endorse you. You're endorsed by the mighty God. You're called by God. You're placed where you are by God. In your workplace, God has placed you there. In your university, God has placed you there. At your school, God has placed you there. In your neighborhood, God has placed you there. Beautiful thing. What do we need to do? Lift up our eyes and see. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Therefore, make a decision today. Let's all stand to our feet just there we are. Become aware of the presence of God. Your money doesn't make you. Your position doesn't make you. No physical achievements make you. It's the calling of God on your heart. Amen. Amen. I preach to you today. Thousands of people. Yesterday I preached to thousands. But still, I got a I get in my car. I go to the airport. airport. I greet the security. I go through security. I've got someone who helps me with the plane. No crowds. That's where the ministry is. Amen. That's what makes me. Not what I do here today. That doesn't make me. That's who I am. When I leave here, do I see the multitudes? That makes you wise. Just the way I'll close your eyes, become aware of the presence of God. And just in your heart, there's people that need Jesus. People you haven't touched in a while. You've been staying next to your neighbors for three years. And still you haven't shared. You'll be going to work. You haven't touched their lives. You'll be going to school. You haven't touched them. Why? Consumed with self. We make a decision today. Say with me, Heavenly Father. Say with me, Heavenly Father. Today I lift up my eyes. Help me to see. See the multitudes. And use me, Lord, to touch their lives. Forgive me, Lord, where I've been consumed with myself and not having faith in you and your word that says that you will look after me. You'll protect me. You'll keep me. You'll give me what I need. But Lord, I know that as I seek first your kingdom, everything I need will be added to me. Therefore today, I lift up my eyes. Give me vision, Lord. So with my eyes, I can see. With my ears, I can hear your voice and use me, Lord, to bring about change and transformation in our nation. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen. God bless you. And the question is this. Is, are you a Christian? What I mean by that is, is, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? And that's why I want to give an altar call here. Do you really believe the Bible? Coming to church doesn't make you Christian. Calling yourself Christian doesn't make you Christian. 
Having Christian friends doesn't make you Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't make you Christian. The Bible says, John 3 verse 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot. He cannot. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot. And that's why it starts off by acknowledging that you're a sinner. Like that criminal on the cross, he acknowledged. He said, we deserve this. He's innocent. But we deserve this. We've got to acknowledge our sin. We've got to acknowledge our issues. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Then if you come to God, just as you are, not change. You can't change yourself. None of us have that ability. But come just as you are. God will change you. And he'll transform you. And you'll never be the same again. But for that to happen, you've got to acknowledge, Lord, I need you in my life. I'm a sinner, but I don't want this life anymore. Turn around to God, and when you come to the Lord, He will take out that old nature, He'll place His spirit within you, and you'll never be the same again. Never. Listen to me. You can't add Jesus to your God. You can't. You can't. That's a lie. That's the issue we have in our nation. There's no other God before you. You can't say, well, I'm going to live my life and then I need Jesus and I use him as the spare wheel when I need him. That's not being a Christian. You're not saved. You're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. Being a Christian is when you come to that place in your life and say, Lord, I am done. I'm not going to be my own God anymore. Everything that I am, my thinking, my life, my heart, I surrender to you. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. You know what God will do? He will come he will take out that old nature and he'll place his spirit within you. He'll give you ears that hear. He'll give you eyes that see. But only when you give him your life, he'll place his spirit within you. It's a supernatural miracle that takes place. God did it for me. God did it for apostles. God did it for prophets. We're not standing here perfect. We came before the Lord. Lay down our lives. God changed us. No credit. That's all God. Bert Pretorius, nothing. That's all God. And what God has done for me, God can do for you. Amen. 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 Jesus. Therefore, just bow your heads in prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that is you here, Maybe you've been calling yourself Christian, but you're not serving the Lord. You don't really believe the Bible. It's time to repent. Don't be in a rebellious house. Where you hear, but you don't hear. You see, but you don't see. Maybe you've moved, you at a time you were on fire for Jesus. But you've moved away from God. I want to give you that opportunity to come to him. Or 
Or maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. I'm going to count to three. And if that's you, I want you to quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. I see those hands. Just quickly slip up your hand. I want to pray with you. There you go. Bow your heads again one more time. God is speaking to your heart. Jesus says today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today he's speaking to your heart today. 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 Why today? Because none of us are guaranteed we'll be alive tomorrow. You can stand with arrogance in your heart. There's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day. They don't even know it yet. If you have to die today, is your life right with God? God is speaking to you. Or maybe you leave this place and you say, I can do it at another time. But you see, five years, ten years, twenty years from now, you stand before God. And he says, remember that day I spoke to you. You rejected me. You might never ever sense you need God in your life again. God is speaking to you now. You need to respond now. I want to give one more chance. If you never raised your hand, please slip it up high so I can see it. One, two, three. Slip up. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I wonder if you can do one more thing. All of those who raised their hands, I want to do a personal prayer with you. And I want you to quickly come out in your chairs. If you raise your hand, quickly come forward here to the altar. I want to pray with you. Come on, church, give him a great hand. Come on, quickly come forward. If you raise your hand, if you raise your hand, come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. They ch- they coming forward. Hallelujah. Thanks, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, give encouragement. Yes. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, encourage him, church. Yes. Yes. Yes, come on. 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 Let me tell you. Coming forward like this is not easy. That's why we don't make it easy. Making decision for Christ is a public thing. So coming forward is not easy. But the Bible says, if you have faith, like a mustard seed, you will move mountains. Coming forward like this is huge. In God's eyes, it's huge. It's huge. And we have stood all here. I've stood here. Like you. Nothing to be embarrassed about. But there's some people. 
You need to be in front here. You, you're not here yet. And maybe the crowd talks to your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, do you, neighbor, do you want to go forward? I'll go forward with you so that you're not embarrassed. But don't sit in your chair. If you need to be in front quickly, quickly I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting. There you go. I'm waiting for you. Yes, young man. Come on, give him a hand. Yes, yes. Come on. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There you go. Waza. Come on, church. Waza. Come on, church. Waza. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Give him a hand, church. Come on, encourage him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him a hand. Thank you, Jesus. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow your heads in prayer. This is what church is about. Everything is coming to Jesus. This is what matters. This is what counts. This is where we take our time. Because we understand. Say these words with me. Say with me, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. I repent before you. I repent before you. And everything that I am, everything that I am, I surrender unto you. I surrender it to you. My whole life. All my life. I give to you. I give to you. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you change me. That you change me. That you deliver me. That you deliver me. That you forgive me. That you forgive me. That you set me free. That you set me free. That according to your word. That according to your word. I can say. I can say. As from now. As from now. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I belong to you. I belong to you. And nothing. And nothing. Can snatch me out of your hands. Snatch me out of your hand. Because I am yours. Because I am yours. And heavenly Father, I pray over each and every one of these, your children. This is a new day within their lives. This is a new start within their lives. Every power of the devil is broken over their lives right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for change and transformation that takes place within their lives now in Jesus' name. You set them free from their past. Every curse broken over their lives, their past. You set them free. This is a new beginning within their lives. And thank you, Lord, as from now, you cover them, you protect them, you lead them, you guide them, you give them eyes to see, you give them ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Pastor Bert a hand.